this looks like I'm doing a confession. I'm I'm not the one that shot Trump. I'm I, pr I promise I'm not. Hold hold on. Lighting's awful. And it sounds like I'm in a cave. I can do the hardest thing in the world. I can't get good audio or lighting, apparently. So, as the title suggests, I recently did the hardest thing that I have ever done. Two weeks ago from this video going live, I embarked on my adventure to do the Three Peaks, which is climbing the tallest mountain in Scotland, England, and Wales, back to back, no rest, except for driving there. This was hard, uh, obviously. I, uh, halfway up Ben Nevis, the first one, the tallest in Scotland, uh, both of my knees stopped working. Uh, I had a stick and the stick was bouncing, uh, which made my knee bounce. I'm quite old. Uh, it, it went, my knee went, so then my other one was supporting it and then that knee went. So I had to do the rest of that mountain up all the way down and then the other two mountains on two extremely painful legs to the point where I was limping for the majority of it. Uh, but we did it and it was all for charity. I've been doing streams uh, a lot this year and it's great. It was a lot of fun completely changed my perspective on life just spending it was just 30 hours with these people but it's created great bonds uh that's that's not the hardest thing I've, I've done though that is that was um it was great and it was for a great cause and it's an amazing memory but that was child's play compared to what i was doing at the same time a couple of years ago before i moved out on my own i released a video talking about some of the dark times that i was going through when I was a teenager, 16, 17, 18, uh, and it was rough. And around the time where I did attempt to uh, unalive myself, um, I don't think I would have respawned, I was put onto some antidepressants uh, called Zatilopram. Uh, it's quite a common antidepressant. I don't think it's the most common, but it, it's, I know quite a few people that have been on it. And after seven years, uh, in about Easter, April time this year, I decided I was finally ready to uh, go off it, which is uh, something I've wanted to do for a long time, but I've constantly had things just coming at me. You know, it's, it's one of those seasonal depression is a very real thing, especially in countries such as the UK, where it, the weather is so depressing and it's grey clouds everywhere always cold and rainy and miserable and for some reason they fill this season full of uh, exams and, and deadlines uh, so it's also the season where you get the least hours of work because no one wants to spend any money it's a very tough time in uh, in January so it's always had to be a thing I do over summer July. so doing it over summer just typically makes the most sense you've got normally less stress it's nice weather, the stuff you can do outside, barbecues, uh, sports, just get together with friends. It's normally a very nice time. 2017, obviously, was way too soon to go off them. Same with 2018 and 2019. 2020 and 2021, we had this thing called the coronavirus, where I uh, got um, I got from probably the happiest I'd ever been uh, to the most miserable I'd ever been uh, due to the job I was working. And then in summer of 2022, I was preparing to move out on my own for the first time, uh, which it, it's just not a smart idea to, to do that, is it? And then summer of 2023, I'd recently just been through a breakup. And again, it wasn't the best time for me to, you know, take on that extra layer. I didn't know how hard it would be, but I was going to therapy around September, October, November last year. I moved in with a bunch of my mates from the previous year. By December, I moved here, uh, living completely alone, uh, because that went absolutely pear-shaped, tits up, cods bollocks. Um, I don't talk to any of them anymore, except for one. One, we message every few months, a couple of messages. That's it's quite depressing. But um, so I thought the microphone might be better here. Um, yeah, will it? I don't know. What if I do it there, there? No, God, it's falling. You know what? I'm nothing if not consistent. Is my microphone still working? I got a dodgy cable, you see. Um, it still says it's working. That's fine by me. So after this therapy, after I moved out into my own space, I adjusted to living alone. It was nice. It, it gets quite lonely, but it's nice to just come in and just do whatever you want. You can lie on the sofa or lie on your bed. 
You can watch YouTube on, on these stools behind me. You can watch it on your bed, on the sofa, on the toilet, in the shower, on the floor. It, it was so nice. And I was my own thing. If anything went wrong, it was my fault. If it wasn't clean, it was my fault. If something wasn't ready, it was my fault. It, it was a very good growing experience. And I highly recommend that everyone lives alone at some point because it's, you learn a lot about yourself. Uh, as I have now realized moving back in with people, <laughs> I've established a habit of talking to myself even more than I already did. And I do it without noticing now. And people are like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, this guy. <laughs> anyway, this is about going off antidepressants because I didn't know what to expect. And I know a lot of other people don't know what to expect. Obviously, everything's different with every different type of medication and every different type of person and scenario and where you are. So I just thought I'd give my two cents. My chair is creaking. Let's talk about it. So when I decided to come off, I was on 20 milligrams daily. Now, throughout the seven years I was on, it varied from 30 milligrams to 20 to 10, depending on what was going on in my life at that time. Uh, there was also a point where I was on an anxiety medication as well, but that was um, did not agree with me at all. <laughs> so I went to the doctor to talk about it, and he said, you know, some people go off completely cold turkey straight away. That would not be a good idea for me. So I'm sure it works for some people, Everyone I've said it to, they all like that. That doesn't seem like a good idea. But the fact of it all is, what works works. I was not going to do that. Typically, symptoms, you know, it, it can be stress, mood changes, sleep issues, lots of sleep. It, it's, there's a lot of difficult things that can happen. So the way I went on it was from going from 20 milligrams every day to then doing 20 on one day, then 10, then 20, then 10 for a full week. Then the next week, I would just be on 10, 10, 10. The week after that, I was on 10, 0, 10, 0. And then the plan was on the next week to go 0, 0 completely off. But I believe I did an extra week on 10, 0, 10, 0 after a couple of days of nothing because it was harder than I thought. It's I thought it would just be a very gentle slope, so you don't really notice any changes. No, you notice a change at every single, or at least I notice a change at every single uh, intermission. Uh, and then going to zero, I thought after a couple of weeks, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. Uh, it was a, uh, I've been completely off him now for about, how long? About six weeks, it's about June, I fully went off. And uh, I feel like I'm just now being able to function properly. Which is, which is great. So I thought coming off them, it would just be feeling like I'm having a wave of depression. That's what I expected. You know, sleeping in, not wanting to do anything, being down. And I was putting things in place to prepare myself for that. Uh, that is not really what happened. The way I can really explain it best is at first I thought climbing. You know, I was doing the three peaks. And I thought climbing, you know, when you start climbing a big rock wall, you have a harness attached to you. So you know if you fall, you're going to be caught. And then it changes to you eventually not needing that rope anymore. And then climbing without it. And it's learning to do things without that protection. And then I thought, no, that's that felt accurate at the time. But I feel like a better one is swimming imagine that you have a near-death experience drowning and you're terrified of water you you're just because you almost die doing it you're, you're terrified you eventually start swimming again but you have to use armbands you're using big armbands on your your big 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 arms god I'm, i need to get back in the gym Ugh. you're swimming for years with armbands and you're really comfortable now armbands but you keep getting looks and you feel in yourself that i i I like swimming again, but I'm restricted with what I can do with armbands. It means I can't go to certain pools at certain times. It means I can't go with certain people. I can't really go with my kids because they're going to think weirdly of me. I don't care about strangers, but you know, my kids, I don't have kids uh, that I know of, but this is part of the analogy. So you learn to start swimming without armbands and it's terrifying. 
you have to completely learn to swim again. You have to fight your fight or flight uh, every time you touch the water and you sink below it. You're not drowning, but you think you are, and you have to overcome that only by using your own head. You have to relearn everything that you've ever learned, and that is what it was coming off this medication. It was learning how to feel and manage every emotion because I didn't feel it at the time because it had been seven years and the seven years I was on these was from when I was 16 to 23. That's the whole back end of going from teenager to adult, all those back ends of puberty. This is a picture of me when I went on them or the closest picture I have to that. Okay, and this is me now. Yes, I still can't grow a beard. That's not the point. I had to learn how to control and feel and digest every single emotion all over again. Whether that was anger or sadness or even happiness. Happiness feels so much better now. Uh, love, that feels so much stronger. Uh, there are other emotions that I'm not going to talk about on on camera, but... I definitely have more adult feelings than I have ever because what I understand, and I'm not a medical expert, I, I study tourism and I make YouTube videos. I, I, I'm not a science man, but I believe that from my understanding, antidepressants work as a, a suppressor to other chemicals in your brain and they direct uh, different ones instead to make you feel less and I hate that I hate it when people refer to antidepressants making you a robot because that is not how I personally felt and I feel like that is uh, an inaccurate way to at least how I felt on them but it did make me feel more when I was off them in recent videos I've been getting a lot more angry than I have in in years and that has been a part of that uh, a part of learning how to control my anger again because I've been through quite a lot of, um, frankly, bullshit uh, in the last however many years. And it, uh, I've learned to manage it in different ways. And it's just been combining everything I've learned over the past 20-odd years. Always in different ways to try and control that feeling. Same with sadness. You know, it, you have different urges to cut yourself off from people or hide or they'll lash out and it's just about controlling that uh, again it's still something i'm working on at the moment i go in I, I buy lots of junk food which is what i used to do as a, as a teenager when i felt bad and that is something i need to work on because i you know i, I live in a house now uh, i do not have the money to go and spend 20 quid on sweets like i did last night but hey that's that's life it's all about learning experiences i don't know everything Learning every emotion again and how to deal with it is very daunting. And I would not have been able to do it if I did not have a solid group of people behind me, whether that's my family or my friends. I've talked to people at work about it. I was seeing someone at the time when I came off uh, tablets and then I, I, we stopped seeing each other, but we still have these conversations about it. it it's just having a solid group. If I hadn't uh, fallen out with my old flatmates, I don't think I would have been able to come off them. I don't think they would have been there for me in the same way that these other people have been. And I didn't realize that at the time, but I do believe that everything happens for a, a reason. I mean, if you watch my other videos like this, I talk about how things have just happened that don't make much sense to me that I feel like everything leads to, to something bigger. And that's something I forget a lot. But I feel like the time was right. You know, when I started going off them and I stopped seeing this person, I, it would have been easier for me to be like, no, hold on, I need to go back on them. Uh, I was struggling when I was going off them as well. And I was getting frustrated very, very easily at everything. You know, you, you stub your toe or you catch your arm on a door and I would just flip out, not on anybody, but just on that thing. I've said some very unpleasant things to some very unpleasant walls, but I'm very good at controlling it. I've not lashed out on anybody, I, I believe. 
coming off this, which I think is very important uh, because it's something to do with me and no one else deserves to get the brunt of that. I'm, I'm waffling. I, I, I have not had a waffle in a long time. Cravings. Is that... That might be placebo, but I feel like I've had a lot more cravings since coming off them. I don't think I've had a craving in a long time. And now I'm getting a craving every few days and it's dangerous, but I, I like it. Everything feels a lot clearer. I feel like I have direction and motivation. Sometimes I do struggle getting out of bed. I think that's more to do with um, sleep deprivation from climbing three mountains in two days. Uh, that, that would be something of that. It's hard to sleep on a coach with uh, two two very painful legs. So uh, the point of this video, much like the point of the other two videos, is not to talk about myself directly. It's more to share what I have experienced with anyone that needs it because I never had that going through these times. I, I never saw any videos of people talking about things that I could really relate to. It was always people downplaying them, especially the fact I was a teenager at the time. And there was a cliche of every teenager sad thinks they're depressed. And I felt kind of attacked thinking I'm not being taken seriously. Maybe I'm not depressed. Maybe I'm just angsty feeling that no one was going to listen to me. And that's ultimately one of the things that led up to me being in such a dark place. So my kind of mission is just to make sure that no one feels the way I did when I was at that point. Because I can understand how hard it is to feel like there's hope or direction when you're completely alone. I still struggle for direction sometimes. You know, I've been making videos. I've had year breaks, multiple year breaks, but I've been making videos for ten and a half years. It's one of the things I don't actually I don't think there's anything I enjoy more than doing it. Um you know, having a five month period where my computer broke and I couldn't do any videos, it Don't know what I did for fun. I genuinely don't know what I what I did. I couldn't play games. I couldn't make videos. I think I read books, which is great. It's something I need to do more of. But sometimes you need someone to say it's going to be okay. And if you're thinking of going on antidepressants, and you're not sure, hopefully this helps you. I don't advise against it. Um, I don't promote it either because it can be so hard coming off. It can be a full-term solution. You can be on them forever. And if that's something you're comfortable doing, then that absolutely go for it. There are side effects of uh, uh, side effects I experienced. The, the main one, uh, I don't really like to talk about stuff like this uh, on video anymore. Um, but in terms of, do I want to talk about this? It's not really something I'm comfortable talking about, but in terms of like sexual, um, performance, that, that was a big side effect that, um, the medication had on me. Uh, it's different for everybody. And that was a, that was a part of why I wanted to come off. Uh, another side effect is, uh, alcohol and substances um they affect you a lot more and differently when you are on this medication like with any medication like antibiotics and stuff like that it's going to affect you differently because your chemicals in your brain are being affected by that plus the uh substance or alcohol it's gonna fuck you up God. Uh, but at the same time if you feel like there is no hope it can be a good solution whether short term or long term just until you get into that stable position whether it takes you six months whether it takes you seven years whether it takes you 25 years it's there to help and it's not expensive in the uk it was costing me nine pound fifty for 28 days worth of tablets that comes to just over a hundred pounds a year 
feel better. There are many plans you can go on as well. If you're younger, you can get it for free. I don't know the details. Like I say, I'm not a pharmacist. I don't work on farms. If you're thinking of, if you're on antidepressants and you want to come off, hopefully this is something to help you think about it because there's so many different things online saying it's so easy or it's impossible or you can just bounce back. Uh, you know, you might go off them and you want to go back on and that's totally fine. Your doctors will always be okay with that. I would just say make sure you have a good group around you and I would personally recommend telling them what's going on. You don't have to, but they're, they're, you, I got very severe mood swings. It felt like I was going through puberty again. So uh, it, it just helps them to uh, understand. And if you've got understanding friends around you, then that is great. It also might have been a bit silly of me to uh, do it while living alone. That was uh, very risky and definitely a concern that people had. But I did move back in with my parents um, partially towards the end of it. Uh, partially for, you know, uh, support. Partially, I didn't have to worry about the stress of money at that point anymore because I was getting food bought for me. It's uh, There's a lot that goes into it. But I'm hoping that by sharing my personal experience of how it felt, learning to swim with our armbands, having to... Re- relearn how to live without this safety net it, it it's the hardest thing i've ever done i do genuinely believe that um I've, I've graduated high school with high grades i've done college twice i'm in university now i've walked from birmingham to london uh, completely on my own i've been cheated on i've gone to four countries in a day all completely alone just to prove to myself I could do it. I've learned to drive partially. COVID fucked that up as well. I got beaten half to death and I managed to overcome that. There's a lot of difficult things that I've overcome. Same with everyone. Everyone has issues. Uh, And this personally was the hardest I've done because it was purely all solo, uh, all mental in my brain. Such a battle. It still is a battle. But... It was definitely the right thing to do. And that's partially why I I changed my hair as well on that topic to kind of a lesson I learned around 2019. Sometimes if you're going for a big change, um, doing a physical change can uh, help you remember that. So obviously it was quite drastic changing my hair. But like a slit in the eyebrow or shaving your beard or... You know, anything like that, a tattoo, that's a bit more drastic. But some sort of physical change, like painting your nails a different colour, kind of helps remind you every time you look down, you're like, right, this is my new chapter. And I think that helped me as well, because every time I looked, I didn't see the guy that was on antidepressant. I felt like a new person. I feel like I'm an adult now. Not that there was anything wrong with being on antidepressants. Absolutely not. Anyone that's on them, I give my full support to because I know how hard it is to go on them. It's terrifying feeling like there's no hope in being told, take these drugs. Uh, That's the only way you can function. Because that's not how it works at all. But for me personally, if you've been watching me for a while, you know, I'm kind of a, I'm not a perfectionist, but I am very specific with how I like things. And I personally felt that in myself, I wasn't the version of me I wanted to be. The version of me I want to be is someone that isn't on antidepressants, and that doesn't drink alcohol, and that is just a, a positive person to be around. And that's something I am still working on to this day. I feel like it's the, the first big leap in, in the right direction, and we'll see where this takes us. I hope this, this helped if you are one of these people um, on antidepressants or thinking about going on or maybe coming off or has come off, if you've got a similar experience, feel free to share it in the comments if you like, or you can reach out privately on my Discord below or on Twitter and uh, oh, sorry, X. If, if I'm not your friend already, I'm, I'm not your friend. I'm not going to be able to be your sole support if you are going through some hard times, but I'm happy to direct you to appropriate resources. If, if that's something that you need. 
uh, I want to create a safe place whilst at the same time not bringing anything extra onto me. That's something else I'm working on, making sure that I don't feel like everyone's problem is mine. Uh, and that's something I'm doing quite well at at the moment. So uh, not to sound like Ludwig. It's a bit strange character. But uh, hopefully this is the last type of video I need to make. This is like a, a trilogy, you know, and ending on the on the positive note. I mean, look at me. I'm wearing a white shirt on a stool in a... God, I don't know how echoey this is going to be. I hope it's not too echoey. If it is, I apologize. I moved into my flat in July and my tenancy on my flat doesn't end until September. So I'm just using it as an office. It's just nice. It's chill. I go to the shop. I buy a meal deal. Oh, I'm so sophisticated. And then I have to leave and go to my actual job that earns me money. But it's nice. And it's also helped me create that work-life balance. From living alone to living with people again, it's always a concern, especially with what happened last time. But this is helping me a lot create that difference. And it, at the end of the day, I've got to put myself first and create a healthy balance. Videos should be keeping on being quite regular. I might slow down a little bit because I've got to prepare for something, a little surprise. You don't care. You're not watching this for that. I'm talking about antidepressants, not moshy monsters. I'll see you guys in a bit. Take care. Every day is a new day. Unless you're, you're a time traveller, then it's a, a, new, a new old day, or an old new, or an old, it, it's, then it's just a day.